we are on page 47 in the math book. So pause it and turn to page 47 if you're not there yet. And lesson five is called graph ratio tables. And again, the learning objective is I can use a graph to explain ratios. And there are two things we're going to do. First, we're going to learn how to graph order, ordered pairs, which you've probably done before, so hopefully it's a review. And then we're going to compare ratios. So those are the two headings, graph ordered pairs, compare ratios. When we graph ordered pairs, we're going to be graphing ratios. So we're going to have to learn how to turn a ratio into an ordered pair. Okay, let's look at this vocab. Again, this is a coordinate plane. So it has the x-axis and the y-axis. Um, it's formed when two perpendicular number lines intersect at their zero point. So these are the perpendicular lines. And the zero point here is called the origin. The horizontal number line is called the x-axis. This one is the x-axis. And the vertical number line is the y-axis. An ordered pair, such as 2, 3, is a pair of numbers used to locate a point on the coordinate plane. So this whole thing is called a coordinate plane. Write that down. Again, this is page 47. And then what was this called again? The origin. That's 0, 0. What's this axis called? Oh, look at that. It's labeled the x-axis. And what's this axis called? The y-axis. All right, now this right here, this plotted number, 5, 4, 5 on the x-axis, 4 up on the y-axis, what's that called? An ordered pair. Think it's in order, x to y, and it's a pair of numbers. A pair means two things. All right, so let's try to make an ordered pair right here. In three minutes, a North American wood turtle can travel about 17 yards. If the x-axis represents minutes and the y-axis represents yards, write an ordered pair to represent the situation. So check this out. You can take this, this little rate or ratio, three minutes to 17 yards. You can put the minutes here in the x-axis and the yards here in the y-axis. And that's how we're going to turn ratios into ordered pairs. Put the ordered pairs on a graph, and then we're going to be able to compare different ratios. Once we graph one ratio, graph another ratio, we'll be able to compare them in words. All right, let's turn to page 48 and get started with the examples. So, graph ordered pairs. You can use an ordered pair to name any point on the coordinate plane. The first number in an ordered pair is the x-coordinate, and the second number is the y-coordinate. So the x-coordinate corresponds to the x-axis. The y-coordinate corresponds to the number on the y-axis. You can express information in a table as a set of ordered pairs. To see patterns, graph the ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. So when we see patterns, that's when we're going to be comparing ratios. Here we go. Let's look at this ratio table. The table shows the cost in dollars to create CDs of digital photos at a photo shop. This table also shows the information as ordered pairs, number of CDs to the cost in dollars. So that's the x-axis, that's the y-axis. So here are the number of CDs, one, two, three. Here's what they cost, one CD is $3, two CDs is $6, three CDs is $9. So when you put it in an ordered pair, it's one to three, two to six, three to nine. Remember when we used to write ratios as like one to three or one to three or one to three? None of these would help us when graphing. So now we're going to write it like this because that is graphing language for an ordered pair and now we can plot that point on a graph. So this is kind of like another way to write a ratio. So number one for the examples is graph ordered pairs. Start at the origin, use the x-coordinate and move along the x-axis, then use the y-coordinate and move along the y-axis. Draw a dot at each point. So for one to three, 
you start at zero, you go over to the x1, and up the y-axis to three. So plot this point, that's one, three. For two to six, two comma six, two for the x, six for the y, there's your second plot, and then three to nine, three for the x-axis, nine for the y-axis. So this x-axis is number of CDs, and y-axis is how much they cost. So now we have to describe the pattern in the graph. Well, first of all, this first sentence says the points appear in a line. Whenever we are plotting equivalent ratios from a ratio table, they should end up creating a straight line. So if yours ever don't create a straight line, there's something wrong. Each point is one unit to the right and three units up. So the cost increases $3 for every CD created. So every one CD you come across here, you go up $3. So that's how you would explain the ratio using a graph. All right, we're going to try this together here down at the bottom. The table shows Gloria's earnings for one, two, and three hours. The table also lists this information as ordered pairs. So for one hour, she earned $5, two hours, $10, three hours, $15. There's the ordered pair, one to five, two to 10, three to 15. So let's first graph the ordered pairs. So one to five. So down here on the x-axis, this is the hours. And these are the dollars on the y-axis, the hours x, dollars y. So start at zero, go over one and up to five. Now, do you guys notice that five isn't on here? We don't like go up five. One, two, three, four, five, six. So five is actually in the middle of four and six. So sometimes you gotta watch and check, take a look at the scale. Okay, so that's going to be one, five. All right, now the next one is two, 10. So we have two, we're gonna go up to 10 right here. So that's our second one. And then for three hours, it was $15. So three hours, 14, 15, right in between 14 and 16. So for three hours, $15. Okay, so A is done. We graph the ordered pairs. Do you guys see how it's a straight line showing it's an equivalent fraction? So when it says describe the pattern in the graph, you can see here that the graph shows Gloria's earnings increase how much each hour. For each hour, $5, another hour, up to $10. So there's another $5, $15. So Gloria's earnings increase by $5 an hour. All right, Gloria's earnings increase by $5, oops, $5 each hour. Cool. Make sure you get that down before we go to the next page, page 49. On page 49, this is the second part of the chapter. We're going to compare ratios. Um, you can use tables and graphs to compare ratios. The greater the ratio, the steeper the line will appear. So on this page, we're going to be graphing two different ratios and then compare them. So this example says, Two friends are making scrapbooks. Renee places four photos on each page of her scrapbook. Gina places six photos on each page of her scrapbook. Make a table for each scrapbook that shows the total number of photos placed. If each book has one, two, three, or four pages. List the information as ordered pairs, pages to photos. So, um, this is Renee, and Renee has four photos on each page. So one page has four photos. Two pages would have eight photos because there's four on each page. So three pages, add another page, that's four more, 12 photos. Four pages, adds another page, which is four more, 16 photos. And then you just put them in ordered pairs, one to four, two to eight, three to 12, four to 16. Gina's is a little different because Gina has six photos on each page. So her photos for each page should increase by six. Six plus six is 12. 
add six more for th another page, 18, another page, add six more to get to 24. So here are those coordinate pairs, one to six, two to 12, three to 18, four to 24. Now we have to graph the ordered pairs for each friend. So what do you see here? Renee, Renee is in blue. So one to four, one, four. Then it was two, eight, two, eight, three to 12, three to 12, four to 16. Gina's is in red, one to six, two to 12, three to 18. 4 to 24. And now it asks us, how does the ratio of photos to each page compare for each person? How is this shown on the graph? Okay, the ratio of photos to pages for Renee's scrapbook is 4 to 1, while the ratio of Gina's scrapbook is 6 to 1. On the graph, both sets of points appear to be in a straight line, but the line for Gina's is steeper than the line for Renee. So look at this, both have a straight line. This is Renee, this is Gina, but Gina's is steeper. Gina's is steeper because she is getting six photos per page. She has more photos per page than Renee. So she's going to be getting more pictures than Renee is each page. And this is kind of interesting right here, the stop and reflect. If you add another person, Marta, and she was doing five photos on each page, how does that ratio compare? Well, look at this. If you had Marta for one page doing five, two pages having 10, three pages 15, four pages 20, that's going to put her line in the middle. So she also has a straight line but hers is not as steep as Gina's. Hers is more steep than Renee's because she has a ratio of five to one, five photos per page. So hers is more than Renee, less than Gina. So that's how you can use words to describe ratios after you graph them. We're going to move into the guided practice now. So we need to turn to page 50. In the guided practice, here's how I want this to work. I want you to do one problem at a time. So we'll look at number one, you'll pause it and you'll do number one, and then you'll play it and you'll see if you did it correctly. Now, if you didn't do it correctly, I want you to make sure that you erase and fix. So make sure you're using pencil. All right, so here's the deal. It says two friends are each saving money in their bank accounts. Marcus saves $10 each week, while David saves $15 each week. This is using all examples one to five to do this. So let's see if we can do it. Let's see if we can make a table for each friend, Marcus and David, that shows the total number amount saved for one, two, three, or four weeks, and list the information as ordered pairs, weeks to the total dollar saved. So what I want you to do is pause this video, do this, and then play it, see if you got it right. And if you didn't get it right, I want you to fix it. All right, go ahead and pause it. Okay, I'm gonna do the work. Let's see if you got it right. So week one, this is Marcus. Marcus saved $10 a week. So in week one, he saved $10. In another week, he would have saved another $10, so 10 plus 10 is 20. Another week more, he's going to have another $10, 20 plus 10 is 30. Another week more, he'll have another $10, 30 plus 10 is 40. Ordered pairs, 1 to 10, 2 to 20, 3 to 30, 4 to 40. All right, David, what was his deal? David saves $15 a week. So on week one, he saved $15. Week two, he would add another 15. 15 plus 15 is 30. Add another 15 for week three makes 45. Another 15 for week four makes 60. Turn them into ordered pairs. One to 15, two to 30, three to 45, 
and 4 to 60. Okay, if you need to fix anything, pause it and fix, and then replay and we'll do number two. So let's look at number two. Number two wants you to graph the ordered pairs for each friend on the same coordinate plane. So we need to use these tables and graph Marcus and David's ordered pairs. Go ahead and pause it and do that, and then play it and make sure that you did it correctly. Okay, let's do this here. So Marcus, I don't have two different colors. So maybe I'll mark Marcus's with an M and I'll mark David's plots with a D. So Marcus, one and 10, one on the X axis. Now look, this goes up by tens, 10 on the Y axis. So that's a Marcus, two and 20, two, 20. That's a Mar Marcus, three and 30. Marcus, 4 and 40 is Marcus. Now, David, 1 and 15. We have 15 between 10 and 20. So that's David, 2 and 30. That's a David. And then 3 and 45, David. 4 and 60, that's a David. So Marcus is here, David is here. All right, pause and fix that if you need to. Then we'll go on to number three. So number three, now we're going to explain. How do the ratios of Marcus's savings and David's savings compare? How is this shown on the graph? Okay, well, let's take a look. They're both in a straight line. Remember I told you straight lines are good when you're graphing equivalent ratios, you need a straight line. So they both have a straight line. Whose is steeper? David's is steeper because David saves more than Marcus each week. David saves $15, Marcus saves $10 each week, so David's is going to be steeper. So let's write an explanation for that, and then you can see what my explanation is. So go ahead and pause it and write yours, and then see what mine is, see if you left anything out. All right, here's my explanation. So I'll start with what they both have, and then I'll say what they're different. Both ratios appear in a straight line. Now let's talk about whose is steeper. David's line is steeper. And why is that? Because he saved more than Marcus each week. Because he saves more money than Marcus each week. Okay, that is the end of the guided practice. Now, the independent practice is for you to totally do on your own. Um, you're you don't need to do one and two. What I really want you to focus on for independent practice is three, four, and five. So this is going to be the homework, unless you have time to do it in class. But you're looking at Ken's home supply charges $5 each foot of fencing and Wayne's charges $6 for each foot of fencing. You're going to have to make a table for Ken and Wayne, graph the ordered pairs, and then use the table to explain it. So you're doing the same thing we just did here in the guided practice. You make the table, you graph it, you explain it. So based on this right here, make the tables, graph it, explain it. All right, everybody, we are on page 51. This is lef lesson five, graph ratio tables. And this is the homework check. So for independent practice, you did number three, four, and five. We are going to check our answers right now. If you got anything wrong, I need you to pause the video and fix it so you have the correct work in here when it's time to go review for the quiz. So make sure that you pause and fix and raise your hand and get help from the teacher if you need help 
figuring out how you did it wrong if you can't figure it out. So for number three, we had to take Ken's and Wayne's fencing and how much it cost per foot. We had to put it in a table and make ordered pairs. Ken had $5 a foot. So for one foot, five, 10 for two, 15, 20. So we had to go up five feet each foot of fencing. Wayne's was $6, so we had to go up $6 for each foot of fencing. 6, 12, 18, 24. Notice these are multiples of six because we're adding six each time. All right, turn it into ordered pairs. So one to five, one comma five, two to 10, and so on and so forth. Here's one to six, two to 12, so on and so forth. All right, then we had to graph the ordered pairs. So for Ken, I labeled it with a K. We, this was kind of, Ken's was easy, Wayne's was a little tricky because of the scale. So we had five, 10, 15, 20 for each foot of fencing, but Wayne's was a little off the scale. Six, two and 12, three and 18, and then four and 24. All right, now we had to explain it. So again, I started with the same thing we did on page 50 for the guided practice. Both ratios appear in a straight line. However, we have to show how it's how the graph shows the difference between Wayne and Ken. Wayne's line is a little steeper than Ken's because Wayne charges a little more money per foot of fencing. I'll add this than Ken does. So pause this here and make sure that you have these ideas that they both appear in a straight line, but Wayne's line is steeper because Wayne charges a little more per foot than Ken. Cool. Good job doing your homework. Again, remember, if you didn't get part of this correct and you can't figure out what you did wrong, raise your hand and get some help right now. It was probably just a little easy fix that the teacher can show you. All right. This is the chapter one, lesson five, reflection. I can use a graph to explain ratios. First, write the ratio two to three as an ordered pair, right in here. Label X and Y in this ordered pair. To plot an ordered pair on a graph, I start at the what. Then I move over or up the amount of the first number. Last, I move over or up the amount of the second number. And then number four, if Samir read four pages in a book every one minute, here's how I would graph her reading for one, two, and three minutes. So you're going to need to fill out this table with the information here and then plot the three points on the graph. <laughs>